Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. I hope that y'all are doing so well. It is a beautiful sunny day here today, so I'm feeling very good, very grateful for that. And I'm excited to tackle some plant chores. Whenever it's sunny, I'm just really in the mood to work with my plants. So I thought that we'd do something kind of fun. I'm going to, I have a large list of plant chores that need to be tackled. Um, so I'm actually gonna write them all down on a piece of paper. I'm gonna cut them up and then we're gonna throw them in a plant pot and randomly draw a few out. So I have no idea what we're gonna be doing today. We will find out together. I'm gonna start working on that and then we will draw our plant chores of the day. Okay, so there are 12 different planty tasks in here. Um, I think I'm just gonna start off by drawing one and then we'll do that and then we'll just like draw them as we go. You know what I mean? I was thinking that we would draw like three right now, but I kind of think it'd be more fun to not know what's next. <coughs> I mean, you will probably know from the title or the thumbnail, but right now I don't know. <laughs> Okay, drawing from this lovely plant pot that I really like, but I've never found a nursery pot that fits inside. Okay, the first task that we're doing, why am I nervous? <laughs> the first task that we're doing, is it upside down? Oh good, this one is actually urgent. Um, and as I was writing these down, I was thinking like, I probably should have just prioritized the ones that really need to be done that I've been putting off. Um, but it's just, I thought this would be a fun little thing to do. Um, but this works out perfectly. So Velvet Begonia Repot and Chop. This is regarding my Begonia Magdalene Madsen that's in my Mills Botol, um, the Begonia Listata hybrid. It's in a tiny little container. It needs to be repotted. I also want to take propagations and stick those back in and get like a bushier plant. So um, yeah, I've been meaning to do this for honestly months. Very excited to get started with our first task. Y'all know what comes along with plant chores, regular chores, you know, the less fun kind. When it comes to picking up cleaning products, I look for a few things. First of all, that they're cruelty free. Second of all, that they're not full of harmful ingredients. And third, that they're as friendly to the planet as possible. Which is why I'm excited that Blue Land is sponsoring today's video because their products check all of those boxes. So the way that they work and what makes them so awesome is that the product comes as this compact little tablet. All you have to do is dissolve it in warm water and then that creates your cleaner or your soap. Use the same bottle forever, so all you have to repurchase are the little tablet refills. Now this is such a smart way to go about it because most widely used cleaners are around 90% water. So this way you're just paying for the actual product. You can add the water yourself. Better yet, Blue Land doesn't use any single use plastic. So even the shipping materials, when it comes to you, that's all gonna be recyclable and compostable. I really do think that this is the future when it comes to cleaning products. It's so much more sustainable. It makes so much more sense. I personally feel so much better using these products. I love that they're vegan and the ingredients are naturally derived. I went with the Clean Essentials Kit, which comes with a glass and mirror cleaner, multi-surface cleaner, bathroom cleaner, and also a foaming hand soap, which smells absolutely divine. This is the Iris Agave scent. Um, there's different options that you can choose from. I'm so excited to be using these products. Blue Land as a brand feels very up my alley, and I'm sure that a lot of you guys will feel the same. If you are interested in trying them out, Blue Land has a special offer for my viewers. If you use the link in my description box, you will get 15% off of your first kit. So definitely take advantage of that. Thank you so much to Blue Land for sponsoring this video. Now let's hop into our plant chores. Okay, so this is the begonia in question. It is so beautiful. I still remember when I unboxed this, I got it as like um, an extra in a trade. 
Uh, it was the first time I had seen this plant. I'd seen Begonia lustata before, which does look similar to this one. It's one of the parents. But um, yeah, I hadn't seen this one before. I was not expecting it. And I was just so shocked by the sheen on it, how beautiful and velvety it looks and how fuzzy it is. Like it really is um, quite unique. So I love it very much. However, I have just been neglecting it. It is in pawn and it's in this tiny little container which dries out so quickly. I don't know how this thing is still growing and still doing like relatively well. Um, even though it's dried out so many times, it's quite impressive. So today we are going to be upgrading to a larger self-watering pot. I'm still going to be going with pond and I also want to take some cuttings. It's really important to cut begonias so that they bush out um, and then the cuttings usually just like root right back into the substrate. So I'm just going to be popping them back in here. Sometimes with begonia I propagate in water. That works really well but sometimes I just put them right back into the pot and that has also worked well for me. And in this case, I think that it will be fine with pawn. So I have my bin of pawn here. First, I guess I'm just going to take this out. I haven't sat down and done plant chores like this in quite a while, so this is very fun. Okay, let's take a look here. Okay, yeah, wow. It's like the roots are just like forming a net around it. So it's just stuck in this like square formation. Oh my goodness, yeah, a lot of roots. And they're like those thin web-like roots that begonias typically have. So I'm just gonna gently lay that down. And then I guess I'm gonna start filling up with pond here. goodness okay I might have to break this apart a little bit gently gently okay I actually think this is too small like this is too tall to really add any pawn beneath it and to be honest these planters I, I use them with pawn I do but they're not the best with pawn just because the gaps are so big in the net pot so I think I might have to upgrade this to like a five inch those um gray or black planters that I have these ones now I really like these and I know that it will do well in here um my only concern is space I I'm wanting to put this back into my cabinet and this is quite large so I don't know I feel like this is really the only option I have because I only have these two self-watering pots unless I did like a cash po situation but I don't think I want to do that let's get this set up So oh, I'm just gonna stick, does that just get stuck in there? I don't even remember. It's been a while since I've put one of these together. Does it go, oh, I think it goes through. Is that right? And then this goes on. I think that that's right. Okay, so now we have so much space in here, which is actually going to be good because I want to take cuttings and put them back in. So we'll have, you know, a lot of room for that. So I'm going to start off by just filling it up with some pond. This is probably going to use like pretty much all my pond that's left. Um, I need to place an order for more crystal star or pumice and then I can make my own, but I do prefer the crystal star mix over my own DIY pond. Like my DIY pond is fine, but the crystal star stuff is actually like good. Oops. 
Oh my gosh, there's a hole in it. Oh no, there's not. It's just collecting from the bin. I'm gonna take this over to the kitchen and just rinse this out in a strainer because there's gonna be a lot of like dust and stuff in here. My big strainer is currently full of perlite, so I'm just working with this small one. Oh yeah, it's dirty. I'm just gonna pop it in from here because that's just gonna be the easiest way to go about it. Whoops, shoot. Okay, so I think that that's gonna be enough in there to pop this gal in. It's actually like pretty perfect. And now I'm just going to, or should I chop it first? Hmm, I might wanna chop it first. That would make sense. Okay, rewind, rewind. Let's move this over and decide where we want to chop. I probably, kind of want to chop a lot off. Um, it was last chopped here, I see. So I might go like here. And then I'm gonna probably chop that into more pieces. Well, definitely actually. And then this I'm going to just chop um, here, so now we're left with quite a small plant, um, but I really want it to be more full, so that's why I'm chopping, so this is good, um, actually I might remove, kills me to do it, but it's better to remove the lower leaf, because this is just going to have a high risk of rotting. Um, I want to be able to put the stem into the substrate and that would be covered. So let's chop this beautiful cutting. Oh my goodness, it's just so, so pretty. Let's chop this into a couple of pieces. So I'm gonna do that. We have a couple of leaves. I'm gonna remove the lower one. So two leaves on that one. And then this is gonna be a separate cutting. And again, I'm just gonna remove the lower leaf. I think you might actually be able to propagate begonias by leaf. Is that true or did I just make that up? I feel like you might be able to. Maybe I'll put them in water and experiment with that. The leaves we took off. Okay, so now I am grabbing our pot again, putting this gal in again. And then I can also add the cuttings that I want in here because I want them to be covered. I want her to be facing. That way, whoop, oh my goodness. Then this one over here and the small one, I'll put it like near the front there. Okay, so I've got everything situated where I want it to be. Now all I have to do is just fill up the pot with this pond here. Ooh. Oops. Okay, I'm just gonna go rinse another batch. Here we go.
Okay, so it's all filled up. This is what it's looking like. By the way, this has some sulfur on it still that it's been showered off, but it hasn't really come off. I found that you kind of have to like intentionally remove the sulfur, like scrub it off. If you just shower your plants, it, it doesn't come off. At least it isn't coming off of mine. Um, so that's all that that is, but everyone is potted in there. I'm so excited to see what happens with the propagations and even the mother plant, like see the new growth branching out and stuff. I think that in a couple of months, this is going to be looking really good. So what's left to do is fill it up. Obviously, as you can see, the meter is at empty. So we need to fill it up to the top there. Okay, so for this begonia, I'm just going to be using Super Thrive water just for the sake of rooting those cuttings up. So I'm just gonna put a couple of drops into this glass mason jar. That's all I'm gonna use. Now let's fill this gal up. I'm just gonna put all of it it's very full now. I want it to be really full though for these little babies. Okay, I'm so glad that we did that. Honestly, I've been putting that off for way, way, way too long. She's going to be much happier in this setup. So I'm going to see if this will fit into the cabinet. The light's off in here right now because sometimes it causes like a flicker when I'm filming. When it's in like the background, I mean. But I can probably make it work. I've just got to. I'm going to be changing around this cabinet soon anyways, but... I'm sure I can make this work. Ooh, this is quite heavy. <laughs> Makes me a little nervous. I should probably have it on the bottom, honestly. I will have to do that when I rearrange everything. All right, well, there she is. I'm going to be watching her like a hawk for new growth. Um, I love begonia new growth as well. It's so cute when the leaves come in. So that is plenty task number one done. Okay, I'm gonna draw for our next plant chore um, before I put everything away because I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna need to use any of the same supplies. Okay. Here we go. Philodendron gigas. Oh, that's weird. We're like doing all of the plants in my Mills Botol. This is like right beside the begonia that we just put in too. Okay, so this says Philodendron gigas chop um, and I've been wanting to cut up my Philodendron gigas um, to propagate it and start a new plant because it's just, I suppose I could add a pole extension, but I think I just want to restart it, honestly. I just know it needs help is all I know. Um, and my brain just immediately goes to chop and prop and restart because that is what I do when my plants aren't looking their best. Um, but let's go grab it. And, um, oh, I forgot that we're supposed to put these in water to see if they root. I'm gonna do that right now as well. Okay, there they are. I'm just gonna stick them somewhere where they're gonna get some light. Not sure where. Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't believe I'm filling for this monumental moment. The rainbows are going. The rainbows have not been going since fall time because they only show up um, during spring and fall. When the days are too short, the sun doesn't reach the window that creates them. Um, so that's a sign that the days are getting longer. Oh my gosh, they're fading away. No, <laughs> I literally haven't seen them in months. So fun. And in the summer, the sun is too high in the sky that it doesn't hit that window either. So there's only rainbows in the fall and the spring, my two favorite seasons. They're gone now, but that was a fun minute. <laughs> okay, here is the gigas and look at this new leaf. Oh my goodness. It is so pretty how they come in like orangey like this. I'm honestly obsessed. This is one of the prettiest velvet philodendron in my opinion. Mine dried out too many times so some of the leaves are kind of permanently curled which sucks um, but like the healthy leaves are just mesmerizing. Unfortunately this new leaf got... what is that? Okay it's nothing. This new leaf came in 
kind of torn and wonky, I think because of underwatering, classic. Um, but yeah, this one came in beautifully. So I just want to chop this up and restart it because like I said, it just got neglected and um, yeah, it's just not looking its best. And I really want this plant to look its best because I love it. Um, it did start growing really crazy. Like it's put out multiple vines and stuff. So I'm interested to like get in here and take a look at what is happening. Like this was just one plant and then it branched into two and then it branched into another two. So there's one vine and then multiple vines at the top. Um, it is, we do have a lot of roots that have grown into the moss pole. So I'm going to be I guess disassembling the moss pole and seeing what I can pull out of there. No idea if any of them will be salvageable or not, um, but yeah, it'll be an interesting project. Okay, so first I'm just going to pull him out of the pot. All the roots out of here. It's in that really nice chunky potting mix from Crystal Star. The roots actually look pretty crap, so it's probably for the best that we're chopping this plant up today. Like the root system is so small and it looks like these are a bit like dry rotted. Like they just look too dry and yeah, they don't look great. Um, so that makes me feel better about chopping this plant up. Take this off. And then I guess I'm going to open the pole up. I didn't even assemble this pole properly. I was supposed to like fold it first and I didn't. This was like the first time I used this style of pole, I think. So it will be nice to be able to use it properly the next time. Okay, wow, so crazy to see the roots in here. They actually look pretty healthy too. Like I think a lot of them are still alive. Wow, I'll try to show you. You can see the roots in there. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but like if you look like here, there's like white fuzzy roots in here. That's my theory of how, why it like branched into so many vines because the nodes were rooting. Um, but yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. So what I need to do now, I think I'm gonna save that potting mix. What I'm gonna do now is just gently remove the moss. I think I need another potting mat. This is why I have so many potting mats. I always need more. Oh, okay. So just gonna remove the moss and reuse it of course. So I'm just gonna stick it into a pile here. Okay, I'm almost done here and I think that these roots look so good that I'm just gonna be able to chop and pot these cuttings up, either in sphagnum or potting mix. I'm very surprised that they're still like looking healthy because I let this moss pole dry out many times, but I guess that's the benefit of um, these like closed back poles. Aerial roots are usually really resilient too. Like they can tolerate drying out more than just like the roots in the pot can. 
Okay, so this is the current situation. I'm so shocked that there's so many healthy roots inside this pole. Um, we still have the task of pulling them through here. So I guess that's what we are going to tackle right now. I actually think that most of them will come through though. So I don't know where to start, maybe at the bottom. Start here. Okay, those ones came through. Maybe it will be easy. Oh, never mind. <laughs> These ones are like tangled. Oh boy. Oh, here we go. Wow. Uh oh. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> He's free. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? Wow, the sun is really going down. I'm losing light here, but oh my gosh, that is so cool. So I'm just gonna be able to chop and then pot those ones up that are rooted. Oh my gosh, that, it's just like, wow. I'm very impressed, very impressed by this pole. All right, next, let's chop. So I think that the top, let's see where, actually, that might be fine. Okay, I'm just gonna cut at like the spaces where I see they have roots. So there's one cutting with a little root system on there. This guy is just like lone single node cutting. Very nice though. Look at that. Wow. Okay, this top one with the really nice leaf unfortunately doesn't have anywhere that's rooted because it was growing off of the moss pole. So I'm just gonna, I guess we'll just have to propagate that one. Um, but yeah, beautiful cutting still. And then we have another, oh, well, yeah, okay. Another one leafer with a node up there. Another one leaf with a really long root system. And then we just have the bottom cut, I guess, or the bottom base of the plant. And those two leaves are actually quite nice on there, really dark. Um, so I guess I'll just keep that as one. Now I have to figure out how I'm gonna be potting these up. I think I wanna do them in twos. So I could do this one with this one leafer um, back into the pot, which is what I think I'm gonna do.
I could even put three in here. Maybe I'll do that. It's so cute. And then I'll have to give them a little bit of time. But once they are established, um, then I will go in with another moss pole. This might actually be one that I end up taking cuttings from for like trades and stuff like that. So there is the first pot. Then I have one, two, three cuttings left. I think I'm actually gonna put the last three together in a pot and redo the moss pole um, and give them that because I think that they're vining, vining enough that I'll be able to attach them at least pretty soon to this. Okay, I'm actually gonna cut off these. We don't need these on this pole. These, just these little tabs. And then I'm going to fold this properly this time. There we go, very nice, very nice. Okay, now I'm just gonna refill it with the same moss. <laughs> Keeping it simple. grabbed my potting mix and an orchid pot. This is, I think, what we're going to be putting it into. This is a five inch. I get so many questions on where I get my clear pots and most of them I just pick up locally at a plant shop we have here called Garden Works. So if you're in BC, you might have one of these where you are and I just find them in the orchid section. Um, sorry to anyone who can't access that store, but yeah, that's where I get them. So I'm going to, oh, maybe I should have left some space. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Okay, I'm just gonna remove some moss because um, I want to put a potting mix in the bottom of this. I honestly don't think anything bad would happen if I, I should experiment with that one time because I always take the moss out and put potting mix, but I don't know, I'm an underwater and it might actually be beneficial to leave the moss in the whole pole. Um, if anyone else uses poles and um, doesn't, leaves the moss in the whole thing, leave a comment. I want to hear about your experience. I guess the problem is that when you water them, then it would just go all the way down the whole, the moss would wick it down the whole pot and you could overwater your plants, but like I said, overwatering is not typically my concern. Um, my plants might benefit from that. Okay, let's see how that should be pretty good. So I'm going to have it along the back like that. Okay, just realized that I wasn't filming when my camera suddenly turned off on me. Um, but I've just got the moss pole in here. I filled up the bottom with soil and now I'm just um, situating the cuttings. 
So I've got the first one in roughly where I want it. And I'm just going to put this one leafer down there too. Okay, that's like roughly how I want them. I'll have to adjust them a little bit once I start putting potting mix in. Perfect. So this one I want a bit closer. That. Okay, I think that that's pretty good. This one's like maybe a little bit low. I'll just pull it out a little bit. That's pretty good. Okay, now I am going to go in with our tape and secure this guy on the pole. We're starting over again. That's perfect. And then I'll wait until the other one starts growing. I'm going to, how am I going to root this? Maybe I should just do sphagnum moss since we have some here. I think I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna use this one. I'm gonna go give it a quick rinse. All right, just gonna put some moss in there. Make sure we cover the node that I want to root. Oh, this is so cute. I love this cutting so much. Don't know what I'm gonna do once it roots. Maybe add it to the other one? I've got three philodendron gigas now. <laughs> I'm trying to only have one of each plant, so I need to eventually combine them or trade or sell or something. That amount of moss actually is perfect. Amazing. All right, so there's that little guy. What a cutie. Hope that he roots up well. And then we have this one with the pole. And then this little baby here with three in there. Holy smokes. Okay, I just watered those two. Not sure if I'm just gonna put one of these back in the cabinet or if I'm gonna try to squeeze all three in or what. I'm just gonna let them drain here and think about it. Let's go draw for our third task. I think we're gonna have time to do one last task. So, might have to move to the bedroom though because I'm really losing light in here. All right, I've got one. Is that one or two? There. Philodendron Majestic Pot. Oh my goodness, my cuttings. My Philodendron Majestic cuttings that I have been saying I need to pot up forever. Today is gonna be the day. That actually works out perfectly. That's a pretty straightforward task. I've got my potting mix here, although not much, honestly. Let's hope we're not gonna be going for a super big pot. Okay, so I'm gonna be using another clear-ish pot. This one looks kind of grimy, but I'm gonna be using this orchid pot. Um, to pot the majestic into and I assembled a thickly moss pole off camera because you literally just saw me do one so I didn't think it was necessary to film that but it's just a clear this is like my favorite style of this type of moss pole the clear I just think that it looks so sleek and nice so um yeah that is all ready to go and then of course we have my baby here my pride and joy this beautiful philodendron majestic this is one of my favorite um philodendrons it is so so pretty um the pattern on the leaves with the silver is just gorgeous again this one has sulfur on it that just doesn't want to come off but um, yeah, it almost has like a camo pattern on it and when the silver is in the sun or in like bright light, it sparkles and it just looks so gorgeous. Oh my goodness, yeah. I love this plant so much. Um, I love philodendron hybrids in general. They are just some of my favorite plants. 
Um, so we have a ton of roots here. It's been rooting in water for a long time. So she is more than ready to go. Um, I'm gonna be potting up. This is two separate cuttings here and I'm gonna be potting them both together. I have this one weird leaf. It came out during propagation, so that's why it just doesn't look the best. I don't really like it, but I should probably leave it on. Um, and then we have like the caterpill there that will give us the next new leaf, which will probably be a little bit nicer. And then down here we have a growth point coming out there. Um, so I'm sure that these will both grow for us. I'm just gonna fill up this with some soil potting mix. Oh, I'm gonna have to fill this too. Put that right in there. And then, honestly, I can probably pop these guys, get them situated where I would like them. I want to be able to attach to this moss pole, so I try to put cuttings like as close as possible to the pole. It can be a trick to hold everything together how you want it before you start filling up. Okay, I want that pointed that way. Okay, I think that looks pretty good going to start filling it. I'm like dangerously low on potting mix. I think I'm gonna have just enough for this. I need to go buy some more plant products. I have not bought like potting amendments or like gone into a plant store for months. So I really need to do that because I'm running low on some things. is pretty good but I do need to secure this vine to the pole this one's tall enough to be secured so I'm gonna do that I need to grab some tape oh this looks so much better having it potted up how gorgeous is this gonna be I always just reuse whatever pieces of tape I have lying around So I'm just going to find where the aerial roots are going to come out on here and fasten that on. I find that roots grow into these thickly poles very easily. Well, as you saw in the gigas, I mean, that one was from North Shore Tropicals, but this style of pole in general is what I mean. They work really, really well. So that will hopefully eventually face forward. Oh, I just don't like this leaf. This one that didn't come out properly. It's like not even silver. It's just like lime green. It's so weird. Um, uh, yeah, everything's a little wonky right now, but hopefully it will start facing the light source. Thinking I'll probably just put this back where it was propagating in my bedroom on that little shelf, but I'm not sure, honestly. Let's go see. Actually, I guess I need to water it first. Let's do that. By the way, I ended up putting the little terracotta pot of Gigas just on top of my little coffin terrarium there. So it's in front of the grow light. It should be quite happy. And then I put the propagation and sphagnum moss and the moss pole one back into the cabinet. Okay, let's water this gal. Okay, so I will just let her drip there for a while, make sure she drains fully before I put her back onto the shelf. I don't typically have problems converting plants from water propagations to living in soil. It usually goes pretty smoothly for me. I would say that the biggest tip is to not let it dry out too much. Um, I usually will keep this like 
somewhat moist, honestly, for the first couple of weeks, like I'll water before it gets completely bone dry. Normally I let most of my plants get almost completely dry before I water them, but for fresh water to soil conversions, I will um, keep them on the more moist side. And I always seem to have good luck. I don't know if it's gonna fit in its spot there. I really need to rearrange plants because it's just getting like so crazy. And now this guy is really starting to like take up space, you know? So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I don't even know if I'm gonna keep these dubia propagations. Maybe I'll move them over here for now. Cause I have so many that are doing well in my Millsville wide cabinet. I don't think I really need these ones. There, that makes more space. Okay, there we go. It actually fits perfectly. I have it turned sideways and I have this one like on an angle too and that's because I want the plants to grow like along the front of the moss pole. So I try to make the moss pole face on with the light source, if that makes sense. So that's why it's sideways because I'm hoping that this will straighten out and the caterpillar will kind of straighten out as well. Anyways, I think that is going to do really well and I'm so happy to have it back on this pole. My long-term plan for this plant, if it gives me nice new leaves, is to extend this pole because you can actually add another one um, and then I can, you know, keep growing it to get a little bit larger. I'm in love with these larger um, silvery leaves here so I cannot wait to see the new growth that I'm going to get on this guy. Look at my new Vero leaf right here. It's looking so nice. That is one of the parents of this plant. If you didn't know, it is a hybrid of Philodendron varicosum and Philodendron soderoi. Which, by the way, Sodoro is on my wish list for so long, and North Shore Tropicals has finally started stocking them. There's been a couple of restocks recently where just some, like, small starter Sodoros are posted on there. And I've been trying so hard not to buy one because I just don't really have room for more philodendron, even though I really want that one because I love the silver so much. And I couldn't find anyone selling them for the longest time. And now they're actually popping up, and I'm, like, full up. My space is full up. But anyways, for now I have this beautiful Majestic, which is also from North Shore Tropicals actually. Okay, the sun is literally going down. It's getting- oh, there's actually a really pretty sunset happening. Can you see that pinky orange? I don't think it really shows up on camera and it's trying to focus on my sun catchers. Anyways, yeah, I'm losing light so I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the style of like select random plant chores let me know if you did don't forget to check out blue land if you are interested in cruelty free and sustainable cleaning products with my link down in the description box you can get 15 percent off of your first kit thank you so much again to blue land don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it also leave me a comment i would love to chat with you thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye